Hey, Pastor Ray Barnett here with you. Glad that you could be with me here on the Oasis. And as always, I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Beautiful day once again here in upstate New York. Humidity is low, temperatures, I don't know, 70s, something like that, high 70s. Very beautiful day. You know, it's interesting to me if uh, you try to, if you somebody asks you where you live and they're from another state, United States, and you say, well, I live in New York, they immediately think of New York City for some odd reason. And I've had this experience myself. Um, and they actually don't know how beautiful New York State actually is. But uh, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, let us stay a well-kept secret. All right, so much for that. You know, today I want to kind of revisit uh, at least one thing with you, and that is the trouble that you have, the difficulty that you have in explaining your symptoms, your nervous symptoms, your fears and anxieties and depressions to other people. I mean, people who have no experience with your type of suffering. And uh, as I've told you in some times past, there are people who will genuinely try to be helpful. And they may say something like, well, you know, hey, I was depressed once and I just kind of, and they give you something that is intended to be helpful. But I mean, you know that they're, they're, not, they're not understanding. They, they, they really, they can't understand the depth of the suffering that some of you go through. Remember that these uh, nervous symptoms that you have and some of the, the thoughts that go through your head, which is really common to everybody, um, but especially the nervous symptoms that you have and the depressions you have and the uh, panic attacks, whatever, they're, they're not something that you're producing. It's coming from the body, the brain, the brain, the body. It could start here, end up here, can start here, end up here, either way. It's just the way you were born. Now I've gone through that this week already, so I'm not going to uh, say it again or go through it again. But just suffice it to to say that you know you don't want to. Um, well, two things: you don't want to blame yourself. You know what did what did you do when in majority of cases you, you didn't do anything. It's just something that happened to you out of providence or fate. The other side is that you don't want to go around feeling guilty. And then there are people who are not really making much of an attempt to understand you. So they're really aggravated with you. They're frustrated with you. And, you know, they just kind of give up on, on you. Let me say one thing in the, in the defense of your family and friends and, and acquaintances. Sometimes, some people with nervous ha habits, nervous symptoms, do have a habit of complaining too much, of talking about it too much, so that, honestly, you can't blame certain people for just saying, just enough, I, I just, I can't listen to this anymore. But, with that being understood and that having been said, there are, I think, the people around you who truly love you. You know, they're trying to understand, but they really can't. So they offer advice that's not always that helpful. So this is something that I've talked about a little here, a little there, known as the stigma of nervous ailments and nervous symptoms. Do you know, and maybe you're one of them, do you know that most people would rather have a, a diagnosis of, oh, it's a heart disease, oh, oh, oh it's a tumor, oh, it's a you know, whatever, a physical condition, they'd much rather have that than for them to have to admit, and maybe this is you, for them to have to admit that, well, I'm nervous. I mean, that's not something that people are ordinarily proud of. And it's also not something that people are ordinarily um, looking to say, oh, well, that's good for you. Uh, it's, it's a real difficulty 
because it, it compounds the issue that you have, right? Say you have panic attacks, let's say. And then um, you have people who either don't want to understand or just are aggravated with you or um, you know, so on. And you have to deal with this issue of what we've uh, gone over before, the stigma of mental illness, of um, nervous, a nervous condition. It's amazing to me in the age in which we live, when so much has been learned about nervous symptoms and nervous habits and the so-called mental illnesses, that we still live in the dark ages as far as people uh, accepting it and having some understanding of it. I just, it just amazes me that we've made very, very little progress in this area. And so you're still stuck with this thing called the stigma. So that's why I say there's many, many people who, you know, like yourself, I mean, who would actually prefer to have a diagnosis, say, oh, well, I got this heart condition or whatever, than to say, well, I have a nervous system that's overly sensitive and, uh, you know, I get these um, twitches, I get sweaty hands, uh, blurry eyes. Uh, I, I constantly encourage you to look up the amount of hundreds of symptoms, some of them very bizarre too, uh, that go along with just simply something related to the nervous system. Stomach troubles. When you're swearing that this is like, it's got to be my stomach, there's something wrong with my stomach, which uh, in the end, uh, if it's not, you know, uh, a pathology that can be proven with tests it's still the nervous system twitches I had a discussion some years ago with a couple of my kids that always were they used to do it when I was younger just shake your leg I can't even do it anymore just shake it shake it the whole table was shaking <laughs> and so one of them offered the suggestion well I'm suffering from uh, what do they call it um, shaking leg syndrome I said, are you telling me that your leg is acting independent of your, your nervous system and your body? It's not, it's not your leg that's just shaking. It's, uh, it's nervous. It's just a nervous habit. Well, it was dad speaking, so they didn't kind of buy it at the time. But that habit has stopped since they got older and not quite as nervous. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier to say, oh, I got this, you know, really debilitating, um, inexplicable illness which obviously in life does happen but for the most part it's as simple as an overly sensitized nervous system that you were born with you know again I, I've gone through this example with you before I mean I have certain features you know blue eyes six feet tall you know whatever um, some I can, my weight I could control, uh, something like that, but I can't control the color of my eyes, or the shape of my nose, or well, other things. I was born that way. And I want you to be able to accept the fact that your nervous system is overly sensitized, you were born that way, and that it's not something that you need to be ashamed of. If others don't understand, and many will not, maybe the day will come before Christ comes first, that there'll be more understanding in the general population. But until that happens, you're going to have to be comfortable with the fact that this is, like this is who I am. Keeping in mind that I keep, you know, trying to exhort you that these things can be overcome. That's why I'm here. I'm not here just to say, oh, you're nervous and stay nervous and I hope you do well and I'll pray for you. Uh, they can be overcome. That's the good news. Doesn't matter if you were born with it, doesn't matter if you had it 50 years, it can be overcome. But until that day comes when your nervous habits are completely under control, and your body is rested and relaxed and it's not very tense, you're going to have to accept the fact that you are not going to be well understood by most people. And that is I believe it, it compounds the issue you know you go to shake hands with somebody your hands clammy I this happens to me I don't mean my hands are clammy but I'll shake somebody's hand and their hand is all clammy well I know right away what that is and if I feel um, if I feel secure enough to approach the person and say you notice your hands are kind of clammy have you ever been diagnosed with anxiety or anything like that and 
remember one uh, one woman, young woman, she was a nurse and she did, and I was giving her some some tips on, you know, just quick right on the spot, because I know what it's like. I mean, it's very embarrassing, you know, or you're shaking or you got tremors, you know, and it's not some again some disease like Parkinson's. Uh, it's very embarrassing, and that compounds the issue. So you're uh, got nervous symptoms, and this is going to be like making it even worse, the old insult to injury. I don't know, I honestly don't know in my lifetime we'll ever break through the stigma of nervous symptoms, of mental illness, and all of these things. I, I don't know. I just know that you have to be able to say to yourself, I mean, you got to encourage yourself that these things are part of me and I will overcome them in Jesus' name. Let's keep that in mind. But until that time comes, and it's going to take, I've told you this, this unless it's a miracle, which is, that would be great. These things take time, and not just weeks, but months and sometimes years, and you've got to keep at it. And as long as you do, and the day of deliverance, or until the day of deliverance comes, you're going to have to be comfortable with the fact that you're not always going to get the type of sympathy that you really should get the type of empathy that you want and that you sh should get but unfortunately it's just not likely unless you're married to or related to an extraordinary individual um, most people are not going to not, even if they're empathetic they're not going to understand so you're trying to share with them that hey you know, these things happen but they don't, they don't get it. And you have got to learn that they're not going to get it. Not unless they have the same thing you do, which, again, you wouldn't wish that, wish that on your worst enemy, although there are times, <laughs> like I say, you probably would wish it on your worst enemy, but we'll let that go. So, the stigma. To me, it's a big, it's a big topic because it's just not not helping matters, that's, that's, being, that's putting it mildly, it's not helping matters, it's making them worse for you. But you have to be confident in yourself. As your symptoms arise, and you're dealing with the symptoms as best you know how and watching this broadcast, uh, don't allow yourself to be marginalized in your own mind. Because most people will accept you, they just don't understand what you're going through, but they will accept you. Don't marginalize, don't make the situation worse by you always thinking in your head, oh boy, everybody knows. Oh, by the way, if you're having a panic attack, nobody, unless you're screaming and yelling up and down the street, nobody knows. And if you, when you're nervous, you know, except for a few gimmies like you're stuttering or something, nobody knows that either. When you're tense, nobody knows. So that's, a, that's kind of a good thing, unless you're going to brag about it, which I doubt that. Uh, nobody really knows that you have these things. So, best to kind of downplay it. Just downplay it. So that's what I wanted to leave with you today. Uh, I just wanted to go over this again. Because I know there's, there's a few that you've got to be struggling with that. You know, people are, you know, wondering why you are the way you are. And I'm just trying to encourage you to say, don't let that become another issue in your life. It's bad enough you got to deal with what you have to deal with than having to get that into your head and make it worse. All right. Be encouraged. Christ can and he's willing to heal you. So keep that in mind. I want to pray for you today. Father, I pray for my friends as I always do each day. Help them to not be discouraged by this stigma of mental illness and nervous conditions so that they can work on just simply relaxing, trusting you, and then eventually being totally free. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that was it that I had uh, for today. I'm going to keep reminding you, especially if you're a new subscriber, a lot of the teachings on the physiology of, the, uh, of anxiety and depression, what panic attacks are and all that, are in the past of the videos that I have already up there so I want to keep repeating myself um, so just you know do the homework and take your time and go through them and, and learn as much as you can all right so uh, this small group I can always say this all the time but this small group is actually working out to our advantage because we're able to keep in touch with each other and I'm able to uh, 
listen, uh, read your comments, listen to your comments, take your prayer requests. So if you want to subscribe, be part of this group, uh, by all means do so. Just subscribe, hit the notification button, and um, thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Just to keep us on the radar here on YouTube. All right, that's all for today. I think it's going to be good weather all week long up, uh, here up upstate New York. So God willing, I intend to be with you here again tomorrow on the Oasis. And until then, I do pray that Christ gives you the peace that surpasses understanding. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow here on the Oasis. <laughs> All right, so we have a little addendum here. You know, this stinking little clicker, but sometimes you can hear it, you know. Talk about a sense of humor, right? It's supposed to work and make this thing <laughs> come out like professional. Instead, I gotta lean over, put my face in the camera, and hit the camera. So this thing here, it stays unnumbered, believe me. All right, God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.